Well, what's going on internet? It is a sunny winter afternoon here in Tasmania. And uh, yeah, it's time to get back into working inside a web browser. Now today I am gonna be sitting on the Mac, uh, so I've got Chrome up and running there. So if you haven't checked out part one in this uh, series, then definitely jump back. I cover some really good productivity apps. Uh, but in this one, we're gonna be talking about graphic design and digital media. So uh, yeah, let's see what we've discovered when it comes to graphic design and digital media in the uh, it working in a web browser. Part two, let's do it. All right, so let's get into it today with the first suggestion. Now, this is the one that I personally have the most experience with. Um, and so while I will try not to bog down too heavily on any one of these particular topics, um, these are some of the services and stuff that I found that I could use if I was trying to live exclusively inside a web browser. And this one I actually do use all the time. Even if I had the choice of other pieces of software, this is one that I would come back to. Uh, Canva, canva.com. It's a free, uh, obviously a lot of these um, services and websites are actually free to, free to use. Um, and then they do have sort of subscription models or business plans that you can move up to if you need to expand your functionality. But canva.com is all about design. It's all about graphic design and uh, in terms of producing either online material or even print material, uh, it can handle both of those things. They've got fantastic templates for so many different sorts of digital uh, digital artwork or graphics that you need uh, across you know website and print um, and so this is something that I've been using an awful lot over the last year or so and uh, it's I think it is a fantastic place to start if you're just wanting to create some promotional material for either yourself a startup your own business a hobby so um, in terms of templates like I said there are plenty here already even if you just jump into the Instagram there's lots and lots of templates that you can choose from with lots of free layouts and then once you're there um, all you got to do is basically select what you like and then you've got heaps of stuff that you can change here and basically interact with with it like you would in you know Photoshop or GIMP or any of those sort of software so they've got plenty of uh, they've got plenty of curated fonts which I really really appreciate um, as somebody who does like quality typography and uh, and just you know being able to adjust things like the transparency different layers all of that fun stuff and then have access to plenty of uh, different simple clip art and other bits of uh, other bits of you know graphics are also really helpful so uh, canva.com definitely worth checking out moving right along we get to online photo editors and this one is by pixlr p-i-x-l-r.com and uh, they have a bunch of different um, you know, services as well. They've got Pixlr Express, which is kind of like an Instagram filter based system. And then they have their online photo editor as well. Now I will, now do bear in mind that this does actually require Flash. So if you're not a, fa a fan of Adobe Flash, then you know that's something you'll have to deal with. Most web browsers these days can handle it, although it's being phased out. So it's just something to bear in mind. It will give you the bulk of what most people want in a photo editor. Um, and in terms of creating an image canvas and being able to manipulate different images uh, in different layers and using different tools to mask them and uh, you know play with color curves and all that kind of thing. As you can see, there's a fair few filters there you can muck around with if you want, but definitely in terms of granular photo editing, this is probably the one that I would suggest, or at least the one that I've found to be the most comprehensive for, again, that kind of free pricing tier. Now, like I said before, as you move up in pricing tiers, you generally find things like cloud storage, extra support, uh, options for team collaborations on projects, because that is one thing that I will mention when it comes to doing this kind of, I guess, graphic design or digital media type work on the web, being able to collaborate with other people remotely is a huge bonus uh, and it definitely gives you a huge leg up on uh, on being somebody who's locally based with uh, you know with Adobe software or stuff like that the learning curve is not nearly as large as what it can be with professional level software but at the same time you're not going to get the level of granular control and expandability long term as what you'll get from some of these other pieces of software moving right along vector vector is free vector graphics software it's not hard to get your head around um, so again very good for entry level uh, vector graphic design really excellent for mock-ups if you're doing um, if you're doing user user interface uh, mock-ups or if you're doing a web design mock-up then vector is a great tool to be able to get your ideas out there and make something that looks really nice 
as an example of what your work could look like. And again, it's something that you can use online through a web browser and uh, it's pretty easy to get your head around. And also, like I said before, it's very shareable. So you can actually you know, share your designs very, very quickly and easily and even offer a bit of collaboration there as well. So obviously the difference between vector design and raster based design will be apparent to those who work in that industry. So I'm not going to really bother explaining it here. All you need to know is that it can, it is a very powerful piece of uh, software and I think it has potential for at least entry level uh, vector graphic design for anything digital or even print. Okay, now this is the one example that I'm not entirely sure about because I have zero experience using it at all. But we video struck me as a bit of a uh, an outside left of field kind of option for online video editing. Now, online video editing in itself, you can do sort of limited edits through YouTube, and really the limitations of uh, of web services or websites, web apps, comes into uh, focus when you look at video editing because video editing is something that is quite demanding uh, even on you using local uh, hardware local software on local hardware so when you try and add cloud and collaboration into the mix it can get a bit hairy but between we video and some of the tools that you can find on YouTube itself um, they're not too bad between we video and YouTube you could probably edit a video in a pinch if you needed to and again they do offer a lot of cross-platform apps and uh, and capabilities that you can tie into different ecosystems if you wish to so when it comes to something like desktop publishing or even scientific publishing, something like Overleaf is a really fantastic way to, uh, I guess, jump over the hurdles of more professional software. And big shout out to subscriber Lucas Stratman for suggestion of Overleaf. And Overleaf can be a fantastic way to collaboratively construct uh, more detailed published reports or published books as it integrates both the what you see is what you get uh, framework of publishing as well as latex. So it gives you that flexibility there and obviously you do get all the perks of it being a cloud based system in that you get collaboration and all that kind of thing. Again, verging on the pro side of software there, but it's still definitely worth mentioning. Finally, we also have Lucid Press, and Lucid Press is very similar to Canva in terms of what it offers. It offers uh, templates and design input for both digital and print media, but it definitely uh, it definitely excels, I think, when it comes to print media. And again, this this to me is the modern evolution of something like Publisher. Um, where publishers templates look dated, they look awful, and they look very boring. Uh, something like Lucid Press and Canva can create something that looks twice as effective in in arguably half the time. And as you can see, they've got plenty of templates here. And uh, and again, their their pricing structure is going to vary based based on what you're trying to achieve. But if you are a you know a business that can't afford to delegate things out to a graphic design company, or if you're just a you know a a private self-starter business or even just an individual maybe a freelancer trying to get the word out there about yourself this can be a fantastic way to build a professional presence in print media and online as well uh, using very very well-rounded tools and templates again it's not going to none of these tools that I've mentioned Canva, Pixlr, Vector, WeVideo, YouTube Editor or Overleaf or LucidPress are going to get you any depth uh, and for seasoned graphic design artists and and video editors, they'll probably present some frustrating limitations. But for people wanting to get their toes wet and uh, and just wanting to use these tools to create an end product for themselves, uh, inside a web browser, it is consistently amazing the sort of stuff that you can do. So either one of these apps, uh, definitely go check them out if they are appealing to you. Let me know what sort of cloud services or web apps you have used in regards to graphic design and digital media down below. Well, that'll be all from me. Definitely give the video a thumbs if you enjoyed it and, uh, and consider subscribing if this is the kind of stuff that floats your boat as it were. Until then, I'll catch you all in the next video.